She's over here tripping because her lips. I don't, I don't really like it. I thought I would like it, but I don't like it. <laughs> How y'all doing today? <laughs> This is so funny. She's like making all these stink faces looking at her. I'm like, what are you doing? She's I know. It's not right. But whatever. It's not right. But it's okay. I'm going to keep it on anyway. You don't even know what song At least is, your lips ain't ashy. Girl, you know, regardless, you are classy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know. You know. Okay. okay. I'm not good at keeping up with the rhythm, so. It's Okay. Okay. Oh, that wasn't the right one. See, I clapped. We're not even filming. Welcome. I mean, we're not. We are filming. We're not. Welcome back. Let's get it cracking, lacking. <laughs> I, 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 I tried to be in sync with she, you, but I beat she, you to it. Yeah, she really did. Like, okay, I won't do that. I won't. Yeah, that was crazy. So, <laughs> welcome to the Let's Make Out podcast, yes. where we make out all things. You see, you say all things what? Oh, where we make out <laughs> all things what? I don't know what. That's fine. Love, life, and laughter, y'all. Oh What's up? Oh my goodness. What's going on? <laughs> I'm your host, Gabrielle, joined by my handsome co host, Ooh, aka you. my husband, aka Babe, aka Chad, aka Chad Sr., but not really because I haven't legally changed it to that. <laughs> Do you? You don't legally change it. I think your you name do. I think that's a change. I think that's a name change. No, I don't think so. I think you just start using it, right? I feel like to be legally Chad Senior, you I have to I actually I think I have to add the acro I have to add the what's an uh, acronym? What's that thing called? Suffix. Suffix. I have to add <laughs> Cue the music, I'm like, I guess. Cue the music. <laughs> Why the music can't never be ready when we ready? I know, right? It's just never ready. Ever. But it just comes in like that. Normally, it's on mute, too. Like, That's so funny. Lord. So, y'all need to let us know. I don't know. I think, do yes. you just start using the senior suffix? Because it's like, I don't know. I don't think folks is out here legally changing their name to make them a senior. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I to be legally goes. a senior, I think you have to have to add the suffix. Because I'm not, I wasn't bored Chad Rayner Senior. But you only became a senior once there was a junior. I know, but Chad's legal name is Chad Raiders Jr. Like, suffix is part of his legal name. Does that make sense? It is, but I just don't think it works that way for seniors. But I could be wrong. So, y'all let us know. Can we let cue us the know. music the right time? Now we're going to try. Hang on a second. <laughs> it, it, it's probably going to work right, but we're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. Get it ready. You ready? Oh Here we go. Nope. Because it's so mute. No, it's just because it's... I have to move, you You know, I have to move this stuff around. It, it's not, it's nothing we can just do like that, sweetie. I gotta hear the music, though. Okay, give me a second. We should have just went with it when it popped on. Oh, well, it's fine. Oh, uh, what can you do? Y'all, this lipstick is not right. <laughs> it's brown. I mean, it's doing what it's supposed to do. I just don't think brown is the right choice with this. Cut me up. I'm gonna stop looking at myself though because I keep looking at it like yeah, it's so funny. Ooh, it's hot. It is hot in here. I'm drinking this hot coffee. I got on this Sherpa, uh, Sherpa. <laughs> situation. I am so hot right now. Are you hot? Yeah. I'm legit and burning up. Burning up. My heart's like burning up. Okay. What is happening? Here we go. All right. What up? What up? So Technical difficulties. I feel like if we ever have a podcast without te technical difficulties, then... Y'all gonna have something to say. Y'all gonna be like, what is happening here? Like, what is wrong with y'all? Right. Like, and you got right the first time. What? But that's cool. It could never happen that way. It's part of what it is. Yeah. So, how you guys doing? Hopefully well. Um, you guys, can we talk about the fact that it snowed? Has it snowed where you live yet? Because yesterday... We got how many inches of snow would you say? I don't know how many inches, but it was probably a good two to like three. Like two to three? Yes. Yeah. Like living in nonstop snow for like eight hours. When was the last 
time it snowed in fall, like early fall. You know what I'm saying? Back, I was telling I was telling my Uber driver the other day that <laughs> it he was about our age and we were talking about snow. Yeah. And it was right before the snow happened. And we were talking about back in high school. Mm -hmm. Remember like Thanksgiving, yeah, like Christmas, like there was always snow. There was always snow, on but those then it holidays. shifted. Yeah, now to where now shift. we don't get January, February is when we get snow for the yeah, first time. Yeah, that's true. But now all of a sudden now we got coming it, back, like, like what? it shifted back. Yeah, it's not even the middle of November. It's so crazy. It's I'm the craziest like, thing. And maybe I'm feeling like it's still October. Maybe I need to be like, no, it's November. So I mean, technically, it, it snows in November. It just sometimes. hasn't been. So it just years. hasn't been that way in so long. Yeah. So yeah, let us know if it's snow where you are. We're in Indiana. You know um, what? If you it, didn't know that. Yes, we're in Indiana. But you know what? It did. Remember the year we moved back, 2014. Oh, 2013. 2013, you're right. Yes, it was like the November, worst winter. Because I went like my first like week or two of going to work. Yes, that's right. It like, was the worst. It was the worst. It was it was ever. bad. And so it was like the worst welcome home. So this yes. is a sign of it's gonna be anything like that. Oh, that was a horrible winter. We ain't ready for that. Oh my goodness. Man. So anyway, there's your weather report for the day. Uh, that makes me depressed and ang anxious. <laughs> Was that supposed to be your segue, Johnny? Oh my. my goodness. That's a good segue, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> the plan is to talk about depression, anxiety. We have gotten some questions about mm -hmm. just our experience and how we have handled it. And, and how to not to care about what other people think. You know? I kind of feel like those are two different subjects, though. Like, they don't really tie in together to me. Well, I think that they can tie in because if you care too much about what other people think, it could lead to depression. It can lead to anxious, or anxious. anxiety, and depression, and changing who you are to, to appease a bunch of people that don't hmm. have control over your life. Okay, maybe. So you know, I think that that can okay. be you know living in the world of comparison and 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 judgment that we do. If you let that <clears throat> affect you on a a major level, then that can mm -hmm. completely make you not be you and that in turn would make you like you an know, anxious person anxious and and then yeah. ultimately depressed if you're not being yourself yeah you know yeah, you're right if you turn off your phone i have to make sure i do my phone turned off. mine's always off i'm a little late with that so before we get into the topic yes you already know it's time for the question of the day question of okay. the dizzy so i picked time. the number last time i okay. was so i think it's your turn all right oh, wait yeah yeah i picked the number you picked the number yeah are you gonna pick the number? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Are you looking at me? Let's like go I ahead think? and go with 113. I had to close 113. my eyes to get that. 113. 113. I'm so hot right now. Yeah, you are. Would you? <laughs> would you enjoy a month of solitude, all alone, in an isolated, beautiful, natural setting with food and shelter provided? A month? Like yeah, not, like it says, a whole month. Would you enjoy a whole month? Not, not a, not a month by myself. No. 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 I mean, I've got. I'm married with some kids. So you, you, okay. You wouldn't enjoy it. Why? Because I have a wife and kids that I want to be with. That you would miss. Yeah. Yeah. Like a month is a really long. Maybe time. like a week or something. Like just a reset week. Yeah. A week. But a week. month is a long time. A month is a really long time. Yeah. Like when you got. People that you love and care about, and let's not forget, you know, responsibilities to those people mm -hmm. that you love. And um, so, yeah, the month is too long. But yeah, everything else sounds good. So, if you were single, without children, you'd be all for it. Yeah, I did that when I used to deploy overseas. Oh well, yeah, you've done that. I, guess. I did so many trips by myself. Yeah. In essence, so yeah, absolutely. A single, no kids, no family. Like, you would you know, do it. I would do it, yeah. At this point, though, a week is probably all you would do. Be take. about the max. Yeah, yeah, a max. I, a max, the max. I would love a solo something. Like, I say that, but I feel like I would get bored. But it would just be nice to have the option to be solo for, like, you know, a weekend. I don't even know that yeah. I would go a whole week. That's what I'm saying. Um, a week is stretching it. <laughs> like, completely isolated means, like, alone. So not like, you know, you see other people there or whatever like all by yourself with nobody else there could much. you sit with yourself for a whole month with nothing else around but food and drink 
like that when you look at it that way like that mm, I don't know that I could do that for a whole month yeah. even if I was single with no kids Gabriel like, would make it about 13 minutes <laughs> I would be like okay this is so hard do I get to bring my laptop with me and my iPad or something That's so like funny. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know. That's just, I don't know about that. That one's weird. That's a weird question. Yeah. So, yeah. What do y'all think? Would you guys be able to do that? Yes. Like, because it, it's it's not like you know, go and have a staycation somewhere. This exactly. Like an isolated, it's that was shelter provided. Right. And an when they isolated say shelter, place. <laughs> shelter don't mean five yeah. star accommodations. No, shout it. Count me out. I might yeah. not even be able to do a weekend. Yeah. With so that. maybe. <laughs> now that I now that I actually think of the question. Maybe six hours. Mm, yeah. I'd do a staycation though. A nice little hotel, a resort yeah. or something. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll take that for a weekend. Absolutely. Have you guys ever done staycations or not staycations, I'm sorry. Solo So location. Solo location. So location. And have you done them if you're married? I'm always curious to that. Like where would I go? Where I wouldn't want to go and experience it with you. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I've seen people take slow locations to like Mexico and you know, like these places, and I'm like, you would want to be with your boo? Like, that's weird to me yeah. to go by yourself by with yourself, nobody yeah. else for like a week. Mm, I don't know. But if y'all done, let me know because I'm going to take a solo location in 2020. I'm taking a solo location. I'm taking a solo so location don't in 2020. Act brand new when I figure out where I'm going. Don't act brand new when I take a solo <laughs> location because you taking a solo location. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We'll take that. <laughs> then we'll take a. Then I we'll take a. Like, is it worth it? Like, what then we'll take it? a to-go location. A to-go location. Yeah, like a do location. Together, do location. I don't know. I don't we kind of messed that up. Dosecation. <laughs> okay, so yes. Back to the topic at hand. Depression. Yes. Now I'm gonna let Babe take the lead on this because I don't feel like I'm prepared to talk about this or that I have very much to say about the topic. I think, so I think that I think that every single person has dealt with some kind of see, I think that the word depression makes people think that it's like, you know, smacks you in the mouth, you're out, you can't do anything, you've lost interest in all things and you're mm -hmm. just you're just just dealing with it. You're just down and out. But isn't that I mean that's not the definition of depression? No, like I, what I mean is, I think that there are different levels of depression. Mm -hmm. I, there are there are functioning depressed people right now. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, saying. just like you know, people always say there's there there are people like fu fu functioning alcoholics. Yeah. Or, there are functioning depressed people right now that that mm -hmm. ha have learned to cope with their situation because they still got things to do. They can start responsibilities. They can't just take a solo location to a shelter for a month. With food and drinks. Well, so, okay, so I'm looking up the definition. Yeah, so what's the of, definition of depression? Of depression. And it says, oh, the lighting just really changed on us. The act of depressing. Thanks. <laughs> the state of being depressed. A depressed or sunken place or part, an area lower than the surface, the surrounding surface. Okay, sadness, gloom, dejection, a condition of general emotional dejection and withdrawal. Sadness greater and more prolonged than that warranted by mm -hmm. any objective exactly. reason. So I feel like that's that's so, not just being sad. Like that's well, well it is. It's, it's, it's deeper just, than yeah. They said for a, a prolonged amount of time. If you get sad about something, something you know, if you're dealing with like, let's just use an example. Mm -hmm. You have a goal of getting a promotion, and you've been working your butt off for two plus years to get that promotion and all of a sudden you don't get the promotion and someone brand new that's buddy buddy mm -hmm. comes in and gets it and you're like, well, I deserve that. Yeah. And you can't, in your head, and and a lot of times, you you know, you maybe you didn't get like an actual explanation. I'm trying to give something scenario wise. Yeah. Like, that can put you in a state of sadness and of disappointment and then ultimately if you hold on to that. Then it will turn into Turn depression. into a depressed state. Okay. You're depressed by not getting that promotion mm -hmm. now you're not just sad and disappointed now you've turned into you're depressed by it okay. now you don't even want to work hard anymore you're like what's the point I'm not gonna get promoted anyways mm -hmm. it becomes this like this cycle catastrophizing yeah. it yeah. like making it like really a lot worse maybe you weren't supposed to because at that point you're not able to see the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. you're like you know you know, it, it this stinks. I'm never gonna get promoted. There's nothing better for me anyway, so I might as well just stay here and just yeah. 
you know, like there's just nothing better. Or you make a drastic decision and quit and go find something that you think is greener, but it actually, is you it? know, not. Yeah. So I think that depression, that's why I say that I think that people deal with depressed states every day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, okay. like, um, but they just don't call may, it. Yeah. Depressed. Like, because it, it comes with that stigma of, you know, I'm not depressed, you know, or, you know, whether it's an ego thing or whether mm -hmm. it's a, not just a lack of understanding or thinking that they're weak because they're depressed. Being depressed or having, you know, being having anxiety doesn't make you weak. It yeah. makes you human. It makes you a person that's dealing with something that is, you know, throwing you off. Hmm. And your problems, your first world problems are your first world problems. Nobody else can tell you that you shouldn't feel or, you know, or, or go through the emotions you have from your first world problems. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and I think, so like, so for like depression... You know, anxiety, I think we all deal with anxiety. You know, I've, you know, if you've been watching for, if you've been watching Gay Babe TV for a long time, you know I used to clear my throat, like, you know, like, <clears throat> I would do that, constantly. like, mm -hmm. constantly. And um, we addressed it in a vlog where I'd say, you know, it was an anxious thing that I, that I got. I would just get this, you know, feeling of anxiety, whether it was good or bad. It didn't matter if it was something, like, exciting. It was just, it was anxiety. Um... And so I would like, it would basically just my natural reaction was just like my, you know, I would, my heart rate, I'm sure it would come up. I would just be fidgety, you Did know. Did you think that pre-military? I mean, not that I know of. Mm. No, not that I know. I could, I very yeah. well could have. I never, you know, I never addressed it or even mm -hmm. thought, you know. Um, so, you know, then, you know, so I dealt with that for the longest and, um, and was able to finally you know, what I think, you know, beat it, control it better. Yeah. To where now, you know, I don't clear my throat like that anymore. I was more conscious of, you know, like how I was feeling instead of like thinking of like all the bad what ifs yeah. or, you know, what could happen and trying to control the situation when you can't control situations most of the time, especially if it's not, you know, I mean, most of the time you can't just control yeah. the outcome of anything. Yeah. You just do yeah, your best, you right? Do what you can. And so... But then also, like, you know, just, like, so, you know, that also anxiety can sometimes be a, a a cause of depression or it also can be just a symptom of depression. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you're dealing with something, you know, whether, you know, for me, I think, um, you know, just stuff from, like, you know, from the war, stuff from, you know, you know in the Army, just um, life, you know, Changes, changing really quick. Change has always been one of my things like that, you know, throws me off. I think, Gabriel, you mm -hmm. have that too, you know, mm -hmm. where change is a big deal. But yeah. it can put you in this state of you are out of control, like you don't have control. And that can make you feel, you know, and as, as Christians, you know, we, we have been, we've tried and tried and it's still a work in progress to make sure that we're saying, okay, God, we're not in control. You are. Right. But that's not always the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, so your first instinct is to try to control it. And then if you can't control it, then you get upset. <laughs> you know, so I think that it's a work in progress every day just to try to be. Uh, but, but also, I think, too, not being depressed um, or working, I think that you have to... Uh, address it you know why you feel a certain way or why you don't and you have to try to work on ways to um to get better you can't just sit in like literally if you like didn't get that promotion and then every day you're pissed off because you didn't get that promotion like when does that end mm -hmm. when do you not be pissed off about it anymore yeah. like you have to move on you have to find a way to progress past or you know, you're spinning your wheels, you know right, what I'm saying? Like, right. so what you're, saying. you're going to be become depressed because you're just tearing yourself down every day. You're living a nightmare every day or, a, you know, something yeah. every day because you're not addressing it. Like you got to do something, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that makes, makes sense, but I think depression is, it, it's, it's not, doesn't have to be like knock you out on the floor. You're done. You can't do anything else. Have you ever experienced that type of depression? I've gotten really bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've gotten pretty bad in depression where I've been, you know, pretty, pretty bad. Mm -hmm. You know, where I've had, you know, just, um, 
you know, been pretty bad off, you know, where I just... What uh, is pretty bad off? Like, in your very bad depressed state, what did that look like? Like, what did you look like at that point? Yeah, I think in that, in that point, it, again, it was this extreme lack of control, un, um, just unhappy in life at the point, you know, just as far as things weren't going the way that I had kind of thought they were going to go. Um, there was, you know, bad decisions, situations, um, but it got me to the point where, uh, and then like uh, extreme lack of s sleep, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, just, I mean, I'm talking about extreme lack of sleep where I was just, if just I, up. if I had, if I went to sleep, I would wake up from, you know, a bad dream or I just couldn't get to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, because I was, you know, taking some antidepressants at the time, you know, like they were prescribed and, and it was just throwing me off. It threw me completely off. Um, and it got to a point where, you know, I, at one point had, you know, I, and it's so weird. I don't even know if I had like suicidal thoughts necessarily, mm -hmm. but there was a point where, um, I took a bunch of pills, um, in the military. Like I was... Mm -hmm. You know, I took a bunch of pills, um, but I don't, I don't think that I, I don't think I planned to. I don't think it was like I planned like it. Like you were just like. Yeah, I don't think I planned. I think I just wanted to just. Feel better? Feel or better. Like, or go yeah. to, I, I, again, I don't necessarily, I don't think that I had like the intention of like being done like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was just more of like a, you know these pills don't make me feel better, you know, maybe I take more mm -hmm. or, you know, I don't know. Again, it's been so long ago. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's when you did that, like, did you feel like that was like rock bottom? Was it like a wake up call or did you still, when you came out of that, still kind of deal with the depression for a while before you were um, able to come out of it. Yeah, I still I still dealt with it. Um and there was, you know, there was um yeah, I still dealt with it. I think that the, it it brought it 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 gave me an appreciation for what I did have. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's like okay, this was you know, I'm not sure why I did this. Like, you know, definitely not going to ever do that again. I actually stopped the medicine altogether in general um, because, again, I didn't think it made me feel better anyways. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of stopped that and um, and then started talking to people. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, started talking to people. Starting, start, I started to, to I, I stopped, like, um, holding it in and, and compartmentalizing my my concerns or my my issues that I was having or dealing with I started talking to people yeah and so getting it out was a big thing you know just getting it out having someone to talk to that could listen or even you know give me a different point of view or you know and then ultimately just making decisions about you know situations or um, in this case um you know a marriage that I was in that wasn't going you know wasn't good it wasn't good really from mm -hmm. the start um, and just making making a decision um, that you know, you had to get out. Of I had to get out of it. It mm -hmm. was you know it was this this is not healthy for anybody. Yeah. Um, and so making a decision that you know, you know, you when you're when you're young, you make bad mistakes, you mm -hmm. make bad decisions, and then just moving moving on, taking 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 account for what bad bad decisions I made in my life or yeah responsibility for, yeah taking responsibility yeah. for what I did I would I you know and then understanding that the what was done on the other side was not my responsibility you know exactly. um, so for me just taking responsibility on for what my actions were and what I could have done better and realizing that it just was a ultimately just not a good decision mm -hmm. um, in the first place and then also and then it wasn't a good decision to keep it going yeah so how long do you think like would you say how long were you in that like just down depressed state like what was i guess kind of what was the time period how long did it take for you to really see a difference and notice that oh okay it's, it's lifting like it's getting better i would say it took me probably after that point it probably took um i would say probably six to you know six to maybe eight months mm -hmm. where I just 
because I, I, you know, again, I made made decisions that were, you know, that I needed to make and, you know, and move forward and yeah, pushed yeah. forward. I didn't sit and dwell in, in what it was and I, and I moved forward and, and I was able to, you know, start, you know, changing things and mm -hmm. figuring things out. And, um, uh, and then, and then also understanding and by, again, by talking to people, understanding that like your decisions are your mistakes um, because again, in any relationship, any situation um, that goes awry, there, there, you know, there are you know mistakes that that happen, and and oftentimes there's mistakes that happen on both sides, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you can only control what you did or what your actions were, right? And then understanding that, you know, from that point that you aren't your mistakes right you know you aren't your um yeah because we've, we've all made them yeah we've all <laughs> we, we all make mistakes we've all made mistakes um but i think understanding that you you know um you grow you grow internally you internally you take you take responsibility for your your mistakes mm -hmm. you know for me i you know you know, I talked with God. I figured it out. Mm -hmm. I made changes that I need to, and who I am today is not who I was then. Right. Um, so I think that you know you have to just you have to take the time to again figure out you know what happened, mm -hmm. um, what your part was, what wasn't your part, um, and and then you know. You know, process through it yeah. and move forward. I yeah, mean, you, yeah. you can't. Again, like I truly believe that you are not your past. And there, there's people that you know that that will want you. They're always going to classify you as your past. They're always going to oh, classify yeah. you as your mistake, your yeah. past mistake. Absolutely. And that's okay because if they are the, because if there's anyone watching or listening that has never made a mistake or never, you know, made a bad decision mm -hmm. or, or. Um, then yeah, I would love to meet you. <laughs> Where are you? Okay. Um, because there's nobody. Yeah, it's like that that <coughs> meme that I that I see periodically. Po people will post it on Instagram. Like there's somebody out there telling a, a telling a, a version of you or telling a story about a version of you that's no longer valid. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't have access to who you've become or who you are after. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like all you know is the me of the past, but you haven't considered what I've gone through or where I have, or yeah. you know, I'm not giving you access to even see or to be a part of my growth. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're stuck with this story of me, which is like version 1.0. Exactly. I'm on like version 10.0 right exactly. now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, and I feel like I'm being really quiet in this episode because I, I can't, when I think of depression, like I've never experienced it that bad or mm -hmm. down to where mm -hmm. I ever had to take medication or, you know, had trouble like just living life. But the I think the one time where I would say I was definitely in a depressed state was while we were trying to conceive. Yeah. Having, yeah. Trying to have a baby. And watching everybody else mm -hmm. having a baby, whether they're trying or not, and, you know, month after month of, you know, negative tests and all of that stuff. Like, it was just a, ugh, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, I moved forward. I pushed forward. Life didn't stop. And, like, nobody from the outside would have even known yeah. how I was feeling yeah. or, you know. But I think I'm, I'm pretty good at, you know, keeping that stuff private anyway. But Not um, with me, but... <clears throat> I mean, yeah, babe, always knows. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that's like the, the closest that I've ever gotten to mm -hmm. just like a depressed state. And I think it it affects people differently. So like I gained weight during that time, um, you know, because I just wasn't taking care of myself yeah. as I was before. Like it wasn't a priority like it had been before. So I think depression can show up differently in in different people you know what I'm saying maybe you feed your depression with eating or maybe you feed it with drinking or maybe you feed it with pills or maybe you feed it with sex or with shopping or you know what I'm saying I think exactly. that people have these coping mechanisms yeah absolutely yeah so so yeah I mean I guess there are there are, there are obviously different levels to 
to depression. Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing that helped me, obviously, we came out of it because we had the baby, but also getting a therapist and talking to somebody. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, that, I, I don't know how I would have handled it had it not been for my therapist. Like, just having that outside. Yeah perspective i think and, that yeah, yeah i think i think that's that's perfect i think that you know um and i had, i had had therapy as well you know go during that time and stuff I, I think that you know that the biggest lesson that i can that i can you know i took from this and i can maybe share is that um you know there you you have in your lifetime you have probably treated someone bad and you have probably been treated bad mm -hmm. Right. In some situation, you have probably done someone wrong and you have probably been done wrong. Do you in turn hold on to that for the rest of your life? Mm. Right. I mean, because, again, like Gabriel said, there's different versions of people. People have to go through things um, and, and, and unfortunately make mistakes or yeah. fortunately make mistakes sometimes. Oh, that's how you grow sometimes. Um, you know, right? and, and you grow like there's been there's so many people that have done things in the in the public eye you know that, that mm -hmm. have been you know heavily scrutinized and they've dealt with it and they're moving forward and they're living happy and there's still people back here talking about it yeah um it's one of those things that like you have to you know you have to like think about how you're using your your life and how you're living um what what moment are you living in are you living in you know your past are you living in your present mm -hmm. are you looking living towards your future yeah. right um, and if you're still living in the past with this 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 hate and this anger and this you know this this holding on to this grudge um, that is no longer that person's issue mm -hmm. it's your issue and I think that you have to you know you have to understand that that if I feel this way it's not anybody else's fault that I'm still feeling this way yeah. especially if it's been Years. Years, right? Yeah. So I think that I had to make sure that I understood that too is that, um, you know, to make sure that I'm not, you know, holding on to any grudge, that I, you know, have processed and dealt my part, mm -hmm. um, asked for that forgiveness, and, and push forward to become a better person and the person that I need to become for, you yeah. know, for Gabriel yeah, yeah. and for my kids. Yeah. So, like, that, I guess that. It's pretty much like our experience with depression and anxiety and everybody deals with it differently. Yeah. For some people, you may need medication or you may need the extra step. Like, you know, it's nice to know how other people have dealt with it, but you also have to realize that it's an individual thing. Absolutely. And you have to find what's going to work the best for you. Um, and <clears throat> sometimes you may try a couple couple things before yeah, you find the thing that actually yeah. like really yeah. works you know um do you oh do you think that <clears throat> i think that and i don't know you can tell me whether you think you were in a depressed state but do you think that you maybe were in a depressed state after your father passed um or do you think that was just grieving um i would say that that was more grieving mm -hmm. um I think that was more grieving, um, just thinking of, you know, all of the, you know, all of the missed years mm. um, with dad because we didn't have the closest relationship. So just thinking of all the missed years yeah. um, and how we were actually, you know, on a good, good foot and, you know, and actually had a decent relationship and uh, he loved Gabriel yeah. and. Um, Chad Jr. You know, Chad Jr. And he never got to meet Reagan here, but we believe he met him, met her, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, before she came. But like, I think, you know, I think that wasn't depression. I think that was more that was of like grief. just, just yeah. grief, just thinking of all the what ifs, and mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, but that could have become depression if I would have let it, if I would have dwelled in all the what ifs in mm -hmm. the past, mm -hmm. you know, what the past, you know, and again, like. <clears throat> You know, and the same thing too. I could have never talked to my dad ever again if I would have always held held on to what happened in the past. Yeah. Um, eventually, you have to just move forward, and you have to grow, or you're wasting your days. Yeah. Um, grudge grudges are the dumbest thing that you can do. I really believe it, and I'm guilty of holding <clears throat> grudges too. Yeah, I think we 
people have I think we've all experienced Too it. Many. It's one of those things at some point in a time you've experienced it with somebody and it's just like life is so short. So short. Is it really worth it? Like, to, for you to, to is it really worth it? Is it really worth emotionally for you to spend this 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 mental energy, but then also physical and you know yeah, and, it and affects everything. It affects everything like worrying about something that no longer matters in your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that mm -hmm. You know, once you're able to process that and realize that you, you need to be happy for yourself yeah. and, you know, f forget about the people that have hurt you and forget about the people that you've hurt. Like, yeah. just move on. Forgive yourself. Move on. Yeah. You're going to be better off. I, I, I truly believe that. Um, it, you got you. I mean, you. I don't know. That's all I can really say about yeah. that. Right. Yeah. You know, hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, it's true. Um, I <clears throat> you gotta let it go. Gotta I mean, and letting it go doesn't mean that everything's gonna be great or that things will go back to normal or you'll have the same relationship you have with somebody, but you just, you like release the power that it has over you, like the situation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like just this, yeah. letting it go. Um, so I found this article because I just wanted to make sure we give like, you know, actionable things and yeah. things that are actually mm -hmm. helpful because if you find yourself right now listening and you're like, oh, well, maybe I am in a state of depression or maybe I do, you know, have some anxiety, like maybe you didn't know and maybe just hearing our stories, you're like, well, maybe that, maybe I should rethink that. So I found the article, like 10 ways to cope with depression and I figured mm -hmm. we would go through it. <clears throat> and the first one is really, really good. Um, challenge negative thinking. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. Like, it's crazy. And it says that, you know, when depressed, all sorts of negative thoughts can get stuck in our heads. So it's important to be able to keep these things in check. And I think mindset and doing mindset work is like the greatest thing yeah. that you could ever do because everything starts with a thought. When you think about it, every single thing it's starts with a thought. So true. And it's like, what are the thoughts that you're feeding yourself? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they, you know what I'm saying? Like, what type of thoughts are you allowing to come in and to stay, like, and get down in your subconscious? So, like, changing your mindset is, man, it's, so, it's, it's amazing how much power we have when we tap into that. Yeah. You know? It's so true. I mean. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Your thoughts, if you let your thoughts control you, you'll go crazy. Mm -hmm. If you're able to control your thoughts, um, be so much better. Be so much better. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one is shift your attention, um, which is also a good one. If your mood is weighing you down to the point where it feels impossible to challenge your thoughts, then try taking a step back to concentrate on something else. And I think that's, that's really good. Um, that's, really helpful for me because I am a little moody. I do go through that sometimes mm -hmm. and it's so hard to just be upset or have a mood about one thing. Yeah. And then it turns into you having a mood over everything. everything like yeah. it messes up the entire day or you're upset about something that happened yesterday and you still mad and frustrated today and it's like for what? For what? You know what I'm saying? Like shift the shift the focus. Like think about something else. Think about it differently. Like okay, well, why am I moody? Okay, why do I feel this way? Process the feeling, accept it, and move on. You know. So I think that yeah. I think that's a good one to shift your attention. Uh, that's a really good one. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, the next one is set small goals. Um, so it says that you know depression can make some of the simplest tasks seem daunting so if you have to you know break down your day so getting out of bed setting a goal to get out of bed mm -hmm. setting a goal to take a shower uh, uh, to get dressed to eat breakfast mm -hmm. to go to work or to call a friend like breaking down your day so yeah. that it doesn't seem probably so that it seems less daunting like yeah, exactly. oh I don't want to do anything baby steps yeah you know, yeah take, take baby steps towards towards healing like you know you're you're trying to heal mm -hmm you know, yourself and you can't do that overnight. Healing doesn't happen overnight. Like, we, you know, so yeah, I think that's great. You know, yeah. just taking, setting small goals and they can be minute and so other people can think that they're dumb. It doesn't matter what other people think. Mm -hmm. If you believe in that small goal and it's going to help you move towards getting better, then set it. Yeah, whatever it is. And then celebrate it. Like that's not on here, but I feel like you should celebrate yeah. it. So maybe 
you your goal is to just get out of the bed. Maybe you don't do nothing but relocate to the couch, but you got out of the you bed. Of the you bed. know what I'm saying? So like celebrate that win and then just like build on it Absolutely. day by day. It's like Absolutely. a it's like a daily thing. Um, the next one is to focus on the basics. Uh, sleep, food, physical activity. Uh, do your best to keep on top of these things because they make a huge impact on your ability to successfully manage depression. Um, and that, <clears throat> I've, I've read that before. Like, I mean, sleep, obviously, like, it's good for your health. Period. Like, yes. when you're not depressed. You know what I'm saying? Sleep, food, but then, like, getting the endorphins going by doing physical exercise. Yes. Like, whether you're walking around the block or, you know what yeah, I'm saying, like, like, riding a bike or whatever it is. Whatever Just it having is. some type of physical activity to, to or, boost your mood. I mean, there's so many other ways, too. If you have a, So, if, here's a great example. If you have aggression and you're, you're depressed and you're frustrated, mm -hmm. grab some boxing gloves. Go to a punching bag, which most gyms have them, yep. um, and go punch the crap out of it. Yep. And that's okay. That's not going to catch you a case. <laughs> exactly. It's not going to catch you a case. Yeah. You can do that. You can get the frustration out, and you'll and you'll sweat, and you'll feel great, and then you'll fall on the floor like, whoo, I'm tired, because mm -hmm. punching over and over and over yeah, makes you yes, tired. It's the workout. So, but I think that, you know, yes, get active. Be active. Get your heart rate up. Um, that's great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> number five is keep doing things. And it says this might seem hard at first because you probably won't have the same amount of energy as you normally do. But part of fighting depression is simply giving your mind something else to think about. And that just goes back to your thoughts. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you just have to keep going. Yeah. Like, you can't put yourself in a holding, holding pattern because of your depression yeah. do your depression you know what I'm Absolutely. saying like you have to keep doing the thing you have to keep moving forward and I think you have to to have the faith that it's going to get better you know what I'm saying like I'm doing these things oh. <laughs> like I'm doing these things yeah and you know maybe I'm maybe it's a little bit of fake until you make it you know what I'm saying just do yeah. what you can and then eventually it'll start to shift yeah, and it things will. will start it will. to change. Yeah, Absolutely. so that, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, number six is reach out to friends and family. Um, you know, a lot of people hide their feelings of depression from, you know, the people that could help them out the most. Mm -hmm. So it's just about like finding that person that you can talk to. And if it's not your friends or if it's not your family, finding, you know, a therapist. Like, ties it, ties into the next help. one. Oh, yeah, talk, so the next one is talk to a therapist. Yeah, so it's like... Talking to a therapist about depression is like seeing a physical therapist after a serious leg injury. Yeah. So, like, you need the best advice possible and who, you know, I mean, a, an expert. Go to the expert. Like, they know how to help you and think of and things they're differently. They're unbiased. They give you suggestions on, okay, well, did you try this? Or, mm -hmm. or perhaps you're looking, maybe try looking at it this way instead of that yeah. way. Like, therapy is so amazing. Like, if you don't do nothing else on this list, get you a therapist, even if you're not depressed. Even if you're not depressed. Everybody needs a therapist. And we, I know we've talked about therapy before on, on the podcast, but like, I, everybody needs to see a therapist at least once mm -hmm. in their life. Like, seriously. I love the analogy that you you brought it home one time, mm -hmm. I think, from your therapist or seeing it. But basically that why why do you need to go to like, like the chiropractor? You need to go get your numbers checked, you know, like your, your blood work done. You need to get, you know, like make sure everything sounds good in your chest. Your doctor checks you out, make sure you're all good. But who's checking your emotional health? Who's mm -hmm. checking your you know your 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 yeah, your mental your mental mm -hmm. like who's checking that for you is yeah. there anyone that's get is there is there any therapy you know that you're getting for that and majority of the time is no yeah it's um, like you get a physical every year probably yeah so why aren't you getting <laughs> so why aren't you getting your mental like you know and I think yeah. that I think that it's you know and then you know there'll be some people say why well, just pray about it and and that's awesome that's amazing you should pray you should about do it that also. but that does not mean we truly believe that God puts people on this earth with special skills to help mm -hmm. us along the way and help us get closer to his Absolutely. kingdom. And, and if you don't use those people, for example, our doctor for the IVF that brought mm -hmm. our beautiful baby girl, Reagan, you know, that was a doctor that had the gift of doctorism from God. <laughs> Not doctorism. You know what I mean? Like, but, but that, that gift yeah. of being able to do that is from God. Yeah. Um, 
Um, so, because God, and we believe that God created it. God everything. created it. So, so, yeah, you know. So, yeah, therapy, man. I, I'm looking for a good therapist because I want to make sure that I am just emotionally as healthy as possible, that I can be as, you know, as as alert and attentive and vigilant I can be mm-hmm. for both Gabriel and my kids. Yeah. Uh, and for myself, because I deserve that as well. Absolutely. Um, so, you deserve to be your best self. Um, so that you can be your best self for somebody else. I, I think that that's a great one, the therapist. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You don't do nothing else. Look forward to this as soon as you finish listening to this episode, okay? Uh, number eight is keep some humor in life. Finding mm. ways to make yourself laugh, provide your mind with a break from all the negative thoughts. I think that's pretty self explanatory. Yeah. Like, yeah. laughter is what they say, laughter is the best medicine. Like, so true. It's. So true. so true like you put on a good little funny movie if you're not feeling good like by the end of the movie you're gonna be in a better mood you know what i'm saying like you it are. just even if it's temporary you'll feel you will feel better absolutely. so yeah absolutely. absolutely um number nine is avoid or limit alcohol and other substance abuse or substance use some of the tips above are about coping with depression by distracting ourselves Drinking and other substances may feel like a way to distract, distance, or numb yourself from the pain, Mm -hmm. but it isn't a healthy way to do it and can ultimately turn into a bigger problem, which I think... That I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And, like, and, and all of us have heard that before. Like, yeah, you know, absolutely. Using, you know, drowning your sorrows away in alcohol. You know, mm-hmm. they always say, you know, drown my sorrows away. Or I'm going to eat my, you know, eat my sorrows away. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but yeah, it's... It's, it's so, going gonna to present a, bitter, a bigger problem. It's a bad cycle. Yeah. To jump. It's, a, it's, it's a really bad um, vice to, to, mm-hmm. to get when you're dealing with... Because it's not helping. It's not going to help you. No. It's just going to... It's just going to separate your... your your you from your body in essence you know like you know your your mental state's going to be clouded mm-hmm. while you're while you're intoxicated and then you're going to come right back to reality yeah um so it's like it's not even worth it it's not worth it yeah to to use that you know and then to, your mind is not fully where it should be anyway when you're under the influence so then you put yourself at risk to whatever what are you going to do while you're under the yeah. influence or why your yeah. your mind is cloudy like what are these actions that you're going to take what yeah. is this liquid courage going to going to give you you know what i'm saying like the liquid courage is not a not really a good thing like because you do all manner of evil you know what i'm saying exactly. like it's been never many, done that yeah, okay exactly it's it's just not even yeah. worth it like it's, it's not, not even it. worth it and then number 10 is give yourself credit yes. we know how hard it is to fight depression so we cannot stress this enough be proud of any steps in progress you make which is kind of like you know like i said celebrate everything even the small wins i got up out of bed today i laid on that couch for the rest of the day but i got out the bed like yeah so you know what i'm saying that's a great one pat yourself on the back like yeah yeah that's that's awesome so i hope that this was helpful yeah and i do want to i do want to before i you know and then if there if there honestly if there's any anyone that is you know dealing with depression like on a really bad and they know they're depressed they know they're dealing with it Mm -hmm. and they're starting to have you know Thoughts that are not, you know, not good. You know, yeah, thoughts that are, you know, thoughts. suicidal thoughts and, and thoughts of, you know, just hurt, hurting themselves. Um, I do want to make mention, and we'll make sure we put it in the show notes as well as that article that we just went through. But mm-hmm. the National Suicide Prevention uh, Lifeline is, um, the number is 1-800-273-8255. Mm-hmm. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. Um, and... Again, it always goes back to it's. There's never a bad reason to need to talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't make you weak. Yep. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you look. You are you. Yeah. You know, and you have to live with yourself, and you have to figure out how to be happy. Um, and so, if you're not, you know, if you're dealing with things, and you need to talk to somebody, and and it's, it's higher than what just talking to a therapist mm-hmm. is, and it's more immediate. Then please, you know, call that number or yeah, you know absolutely. down the show notes as well, so you can it'll be there. Um, but you know, then the last thing for me about this is that, you know, I am. It 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 is to me. It's part of my testimony, my life. You know, the way I was raised, the way I grew up, mm-hmm. and then how, who I am now. I don't know if I would be who I am now. 
for Gabrielle and for my kids if I wouldn't have went through the things that I went through mm. and made the mistakes that I did, uh, went to war, saw the things, did the things um, that I did, experienced life um, with no direction mm. at times, um, I wouldn't be who I am now. And I think that goes for everybody. Your past and your walk is your walk. Yeah. You went through it. Don't regret your life. Don't regret what you went through. Don't regret anything that happened. You cannot change it. Yeah. Regretting, I... It's just a waste of time. It's a waste of time. You cannot change anything that happened in the past. So why regret it? Learn from it. Mm -hmm. Forgive yourself. Forgive someone else if you need to. And then come up with a plan of how you're going to be a better new version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's today what I am. Yeah. Um, and so I'm thankful for that, but that, but that also goes, anybody can do it. So if you feel like your past defines you and other people are telling you that your past defines you, it doesn't. Yeah. So you have to believe that and you have to move forward. And, and so I think that's the way I'll end this. Yeah. Um, cause you learned some things about me mm -hmm. on this podcast today. Yeah. Um, but that's a part of who. Thanks for I, being open. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that's who, that's of course what Gabriel and I talk all the time. She knew all this stuff, but this is yeah. what I'm trying to do. If my story and my mistakes can help other people, yeah. um, then, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah, no, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And I, I would be remiss without adding the first thing that I think you should do if you're struggling with depression, and that's to spend some time with God. Yeah, absolutely. Do some praying. Absolutely. Um, reading the word. We are Christian and we believe that Jesus is our savior. And 100%. maybe you don't believe that, but he is. Um, and, you know, do something different. Like if, if you've never, well, I'm not religious. I don't do all of that. Maybe try something different. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it'll give you the solution that you're looking <laughs> for. I know that it will, but you know 100%. what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you have to spend some time with God. Like who else? better than the creator to help you go through these situations because he he created you he knows you better than 100%. you know yourself so it's like <clears throat> definitely spend some time with the lord and um in prayer and just seeking seeking his truth and his wisdom yeah. and just guidance on what to do and how to cope and how to have faith and yeah. how to be strong in the midst of everything that's happening because 100%. we can do that you know he has given us his power and his strength it's in us so we can do that so um yeah i, I have to mention that because we are christian that's what yeah, we believe exactly. and you know if you don't you know i pray that maybe yeah. one day you will yeah and and, and t i think that's great i'm glad you brought that and, mm -hmm. and to go along with that like what here's that's what's that's what's so cool about god is that the the man of God that I thought that I was then, which was very limited, and I know, mm -hmm. is definitely not the man of God that I am now. Yeah. And I still got a long ways to go, but all because of his grace and his mm -hmm. forgiveness and his peace that I'm able to get where I am now and ultimately to where he wants me to be. Yeah. And so I think that that's the coolest part about God is that the minute you ask for it to be forgiven, you're forgiven. Yeah. There's no grudge. There's a, it's a clean slate. Mm -hmm. You can move forward with a clean slate with, with God, with the only person, only being that can truly judge you. Yeah. And yeah. And he will give you peace like you've never ever had it before. Yes, it's it's oh, it's a, it's amazing. It's a blessing. It's amazing. So hopefully you guys yes. enjoyed this episode. Um we would love it if you would share in the comments yes. or you can you know tweet us instagram us let us know like have you ever dealt with depression how did you get through it because your words could help somebody that's listening or that's watching this you know um and i love just having the dialogue in the Absolutely. comment section and um yeah you guys yeah and let's yeah and let's use the comments to be encouraging to people mm -hmm. let's use this as an opportunity to encourage others and and uh you know yeah Maybe yeah. you're depressed and maybe you just depressed. have never told anybody. Exactly. You, maybe somebody can give you an encouraging word. you putting that, you know, in the comments. Like. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, you guys, have a good rest of your day. Yes, have a good rest of the day. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yes, please and... rate this on iTunes or yes. any, anywhere that you're listening. Yes. Um, and uh, follow us on all of our platforms. They'll all be down in the show notes. We appreciate you. 
Um, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. See ya. Deuces. <laughs> Yeah, we That was done. a good one. I feel like it started off shaky. I didn't know where it was going to go, but I think that that was good. That was good. Yeah, that was good. So we hope that you guys enjoyed yes. it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Deuces.